I'm Chris. I'm Aid. And this is Pedalbox. Last episode, you saw us trying to prep Adrian's Mark II Golf for the roadkill event up in Northampton. Unfortunately, we set fire to it and generally, you know, made a few mistakes and didn't really get it ready in time. So, we are back to this. Yes. And what we're going to do this time, instead of removing stuff like the back of the car, the bottom of the car, and we could have removed other bits, we're going to add some stuff to it. And what we're going to add is this box section, which is probably a bit too big for what we need. It's a lot bigger and a lot stronger and certainly a lot heavier than the structural members of the engine in the A3 that we've pulled this from with. Unfortunately, the difference is Audi know what they're doing with structural engineering and we don't. Yep. So we're throwing a bit more metal at the problem, basically to account for the fact that our welds probably won't be quite so good. Our general you know, manufacturing and design won't be as good as theirs. If we're going to do anything, we need to flip this over onto something. So we've taken the angles and now we've shuffled everything back across so there wasn't a great deal of point in uh, levelling out the table. But if we bring the engine up to this now, we can start working out much better how high everything needs to be because the two mounts are at different heights. So we actually need, I think, to work on this one more than that one, which might have been an error. We'll see. So this clearly is not at the right angle for how we're going to mount it. So we're going to have to put this back down, shimmy it around a bit and then pick it back up again. Sweet. So with the chassis leg coming down the back of here, this inside is going to be the furthest out part of the chassis rail. So if you pass me that box, this is going to essentially, outside edge of this is going to run along the inside edge of there. So now we can lift the engine, position it and see where it's actually going to end up. So that is the lower of the two um, mounting points. This one on this side sits on top of a small upright a small support which lifts the engine mount higher up so we only need to worry about this one for making two symmetrical rails and that one we just build the same support as is in the, other, the donor car. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this shape of the frame out of the end of this leg and then butt the front edge of it right up into there and weld the whole way along. So that is going to come all the way to here, yeah. that's going to join into there so and then the theory engine that goes all the way along and follows down into yep. the rest of the car. And the engine mount will just sit on this, suspended out the back of the car. Yeah. So from the beginning of the build, we actually thought the engine leaned forward quite far. Turns out we were both mistaken, and you can see the line of the block here is actually kind of slightly leaning back. So we thought there'd be a massive big cavity of space in the front here, but actually the oil filter, alternator, and a few other gubbins on the front do give it a pretty good matching slope there. So we're not really gonna be wasting a whole ton of space, which is nice. So you can see a whole bunch of markings that we took on the end plate here. They're not really relevant to what we're doing today, but since we're building a CAD model of the car, they're going to be useful later. Once again, we're cutting bits off the car. So all we're doing here is marking up and cutting out a section of the side panel to insert the chassis legs into later. We could, in theory, have left it in place, but having, like, cutting the chassis leg to fold around, and that would have just been a nightmare. Some of the factors we were trying to consider when determining where to put our chassis leg here were going to be how easy it would be to cut the area out, uh, how good it would look alignment wise, you know, should it be outside or level or inside, uh, how, where it should be vertically to meet the engine very well. Unfortunately, that puts us right smack bang in the way of this. Now, this is a fairly important part strength wise as far as supporting across the back of the car and everything. So what we're probably going to do is just take as little as we can out of the end of it here and then just fill it in to re-add some of the strength that we'll be taking out because we're going to be taking out roughly half of it that way, maybe even removing the whole thing and filling in later. So we're just going to cut that out, fill back in here at another time, and we should be good. Now our chassis has a bit of a history of sounding like a maraca every time we move it around. This is why. This might look alarming, but it's worth bearing in mind that we have actually cut and ground a lot of metal off this chassis, and it makes sense that some of that metal would have found its way inside the box section. And of course, now that we're cutting it all apart, it's falling out again. So we've done a lot of, uh, lot of cutting, a lot of refining, and this fits in perfectly. What we're going to do now is I've taken the piece of plate that we cut out of here, templated it on the side, and we're just going to cut this corner off, and it should butt nicely up into the gap there. So we've cut the end off now, we've notched it nicely, and we've got a little divot there to sit around the frame and secure it on the front. So let's drop this in. And there we go. So just to make sure that we've got it vaguely true, 
because the last thing we want is this popping up that way or tucking in that way. I'm just going to offer this up against it and see if we're concave or convex. And that is to within what, like half a mil, I think, of dip. There's more bend than that in the chassis itself. So we're all set on the passenger side. So we've now just got to repeat all this on the driver side. Nice and simple now that we know what we're doing. Shouldn't take too long.